And this may or may not apply to everybody, but with the help of the Lord, it will come together. Yes, yes. In Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10, I'm going to read, um, the key verse is going to be 25, but I'm going to read verses 19 through 25. It reads as follows, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil that is to say his flesh. <clears throat> and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, <laughs> but, or, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. See, we, we can't make it a habit of, of not coming to church. Mm -hmm. See, and people, they, that's what they've done. They made it a habit of not coming to church. Let us pray. Dear God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege that I have to stand before your people and to teach and to preach what you put in my heart. Jesus, let these words not return back empty. Let them go and do what they're supposed to do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And like always, Lord, you're welcome to walk and dwell amongst your people. Like you said that you would and like you said that you do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, like I said, the key verse is... 25, it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. So some people, they make it a habit of not coming to church. <coughs> it says, <coughs> but exhorting one another and so much the more. As ye see the day approaching. What day is that? What day is approaching? The day of the Lord. The day when the Lord comes for his church is approaching, it says. <clears throat> so in other words, don't make it a habit of staying home in these last days. In these last days, don't make it a habit of not coming to church. Because the day is getting closer. <laughs> these last days, you know, we we need to be in church even more. That's right, amen. We need to be in church every time you possibly can. Every time you can be in church, be in church. That's Don't make right. it an excuse. Amen. Oh, the kids are sick. Everybody's sick. Amen. Well, everybody's sick, but you still go to work, right? Amen. Everybody goes to work. That's right. Sick, right? Oh, but I got to pay the bills. Well, what's more important? Paying the bills or your salvation? Huh? Your salvation needs to be more important. Your salvation needs to be important enough to go to church. <laughs> Matter of fact, you go to church and you get prayer. You go to church and you get prayed over. You have them anoint you with oil and the prayer of faith will make you whole. That's right, amen. When you're sick, it says. Yes. Huh? That's when you get prayed for, right? Amen. When you're sick. Amen. That's what the context is. You being sick, you go get prayer. Amen. You, you can't obey that if you're, if 
you don't go to church. That's right. Oh, but you got to come to my place. No, you have to have that expectation. That's right. You have to have that expectation that if I can make it to church and get prayer, I'm going to be made whole. That's right. See, you have to have that expectation and yes. come. Yes. See, you have to start believing yeah. it. <clears throat> We need to start believing the Word of God, including myself. That's right. We need to believe and act on it. Yes. See, we yes. need to do that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> These last days, we need to do it because it's closer and closer. Yes, it is. If it was close when on the day of Pentecost, how much closer are we now? That's right. How much closer are we now since you first believed? That's right. Since you first believed, how much closer is it then? I know when I came to the Lord, they were talking about the Lord coming. The Lord coming, who knows, September of 1988 probably, if I could remember correctly. The Lord is coming in September of 1988. I gave my life to the Lord in July of 88. And I'd be there crying, asking the Lord, Lord, I just came to the Lord. I just gave my life to you. Why are you coming now? Huh? I didn't have enough time. I, I don't have enough time to get ready. See, and you need time to get ready. You need time to <clears throat> to leave this world behind. That's right. Yeah, the Lord, there, there's an 11th hour, Right? There's an 11th hour when the Lord sends out his, <laughs> send, they send the laborers to go work for that extra hour, for that last hour. And yeah, the Lord knows what, there's a minimum that you need. When you come to the Lord at the 11th hour, there's a minimum, but you still have to go. You still have to get baptized in Jesus' name. You still need to receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. You still need to obey what the things you do know, the things you were taught. Amen. You still need to obey them. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we need, we need to come to church. You need to come to church when you can. That's right, amen. <clears throat> amen. So the coming of the Lord is much nearer, much closer. You and I should be in church every time there is church. That's right. Our schedule should revolve around church. That's right, amen. Yes. Yes, amen. Not the other way around. That's right. Not the other way around. Oh, let me see. Let me look at my calendar. Oh, I got this and that and no, you come to church. Amen. You schedule everything around church. That's right, amen. I got it. Scheduling church should be easier with a smartphone, right? Amen. That's right. Amen. It should be easy. That's right. I know on mine, I got church Wednesdays and Saturday or sun Wednesdays and Sundays. Amen. And once it's there. Every Wednesday, every Sunday, it comes up. Never ending. Right? Right. Never ending. So when you go to schedule something else, you don't schedule church days. Mm -hmm. Or if you do after, you can do it around church, after church. That's right. Right? Yes, amen. But coming to church should be the most important thing. Not, not getting your hair done, not anything else. That's right, man. Not cutting your hair, right? Remember cutting your hair? <clears throat> you don't do it no more? That's right, man. Right? So that should be off your schedule. Amen. Right? Yes. Getting your hair cut, women? Amen. That should be off your schedule. You don't schedule haircuts. Now, men, if you, you can schedule haircuts around church, after church, before church, whatever. Mm -hmm. huh? So we need to do that. And it's easy to do with these, like I said, with these phones.
Amen. Wednesdays and Sundays from now until the Lord comes. If you could, postpone your death. Oops. Postpone your death. <laughs> you don't want to die on a church night or church day. Wednesday and Sunday. You got every other day of the week to die. Right? You can die any other day of the week. But not on church days. It's more important. Yes. Right? Postpone it. Postpone your death. Oh, we had a sister that she practically went to church every day until she died practically. Right, yes, she, did. she died of cancer. Yes. Every day she, she'd go to church. Yes. She'd go to church sick. Amen. Cancer. Um, <clears throat> Till, till she could no more. But, you know, and I, after that, I heard everybody, oh, that's, she set the bar right there. She set the standard. She went to church sick. Well, what's your excuse? Why don't you go to church? Oh, you got a toothache or belly ache, whatever aches. Uh, no, <clears throat> you go to church, get prayer. Amen. I mentioned when I came to church, and before uh, before church, I <clears throat> went to the dentist, and he was supposed to do something, and he ended up drilling too hard, and ended up doing a root canal Amen. before church. I didn't know. I, I, everybody says they hurt. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was supposed to hurt or not. I still came to church. Yes, yeah. I didn't know if I was supposed to be hurting or not. <clears throat> they didn't hurt me. Uh, they say they hurt. Do they hurt? Yes, they do. See, <clears throat> I didn't know if they hurt it or not. I came to church. I was in no pain. But the Lord is good. Yes, He is. The Lord is good. <clears throat> I figure if I go to church after the dentist, as long as the as long as the anesthetics go away, and I'm not slobbering all over the mic, I should be okay. But you know, God is good. <clears throat> the early church came together every day, <clears throat> every day, yes, in yes. Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> and it's 46 and 47. Acts 2, 46 says, <clears throat> And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart mm -hmm. praising God and having favor with the people with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved See, they were having church daily and here we only have church twice a week. Amen. Twice a week. What are you doing with the rest of your time? Amen. What are we doing with the rest of our time if we're not in church? Do we just, <clears throat> are we just Christians on Wednesday and Sunday? No, we're Christians every day. We're serving the Lord every day of the week. Every day of the week, you're a child of God. You need to be doing something for the Lord every day of the week if you're not in church. Amen. So how are we doing? How, what are we doing the rest of the time? You should be getting... Should at least read your Bible, right? <clears throat> read the Word of God. Pray. Tell people about the Lord. Some people say, oh, you don't go door knocking. You don't do this. You don't do that. It's personal, right? Mm -hmm. Serving the Lord is personal. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. 
Are you doing all those things that you want everyone else to do? Everything you want someone else to do, are you doing? See, we need to be doing those things. We need to. You know, church, <clears throat> church is just, we reinforce what you should be already doing. Yeah. Everything you're doing, church reinforces it, strengthens you, right? Yes, yeah. man. Keep going, yes. keep going. Yeah. You're supposed to be teaching your children from the time you get up till the time you go to bed. Yeah. You teach your children. You teach them the Word of God. You teach them what it's like to be a child of God. Amen. From sunrise to sunset. Or not even sunset, right? Because it's only afternoon or into the night. <clears throat> but no, from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, you're teaching your children. And you teach them by example because you're doing the same thing. Yes. You're doing those things. You're getting up early and <coughs> you got the Lord on your mind. Yeah. <clears throat> teach them about Jesus. Yes. What means this? What does this mean? Why do we do those things? Why do we do what we do? Why do we do what we do? <clears throat> <clears throat> the, one of the biggest days of the other. Most of Christianity is next week, right? Next week, sunrise service. Hmm. Sunrise service next week. Well, <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus wasn't. Jesus didn't die on a Friday, and he didn't resurrect on Sunday morning. He didn't resurrect Sunday morning. Remember, <clears throat> he said he was going to be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. <coughs> three days and three nights. Where do you get three days and three nights from Friday sunset to Sunday morning? Where do you get three days and three nights? He said it. Jesus says, the only example that you have is that of Jonah. <clears throat> he was in the valley of the, the whale's valley for three days and three nights. And so is the heart of the Son of Man. He's going to be in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights. But you know that, right? Yeah. You know that. Three days and three nights. He was crucified <clears throat> on a Wednesday, just before. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's put it this way. He had to be taken down. I think the Word of God says about 3 o'clock. About 3 o'clock, he gave up the ghost. Okay. About 3, 3 p.m., and by the time the sun went down, he was already taken off the cross. He was already taken off the cross <clears throat> and put into the, into the grave. Mm -hmm. So three days and three nights after that, would have put it at Saturday. <clears throat> Saturday, just before sunset, he resurrected. Because when the first day of the week came, the first day of the week, remember, it wasn't like our, our days. Our days are from 12 to 12. 12 to 12. No, the Jews are from in the evening and the morning, one day. Evening and morning. So the Lord before sunset, was crucified and buried, and he resurrected three days later, same time. So when Sunday came, and that Sunday was the evening, that evening, Sunday was the first day of the week. Still is, right? 
Sunday is still the first day of the week. Your work weekend till Monday, right? But it's Sunday. <clears throat> Sunday was the first day of the week, and that Sunday began like yesterday. Like yesterday evening, their Sunday began. I tell everyone the <clears throat> when me and my cousin Frank had the uh, optical there on Colfax and Perry. On Colfax and Perry, we're doing a little eye eyeglass shopping, and there was a bunch of Jews around there, right? Mm -hmm. Around Colfax and Perry, all the Jews. But come Friday sunset, Friday evening, they all go away. They begin their Sabbath for, on Friday evening. Okay. Their, their Sabbath began Friday evening. They're gone. And <clears throat> so it's, it's Friday evening to Saturday. Saturday sunset. Okay. That's their Sabbath. Because the evening is Sunday. On Saturday, but that's the that's the way it is, and <clears throat> I know I went off went off the um, to a tangent to to let you know about about the Passover, the Passover <clears throat> and Easter, okay. So Easter has its name, Easter, East. What comes out of the east, the sunrise, right? Sunrise, Easter's. So that's their sunrise service, Easter. They're, uh, <clears throat> it's in honor of the sun. It is what it is. It's a sunrise service. It's not in honor of Jesus. He was already resurrected sunset. At sunset Saturday. Okay, because that's when the Sunday began. <clears throat> that's when the Sunday began. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> that's what we do. So the early church came together every day of the week. Yes. On, with, with that, and since I mentioned the Passover and all this, um, I'd like to do, uh, <clears throat> take the Lord's Supper next week. Okay. We'll take the Lord's Supper next Sunday. Yes. Amen. Okay. Amen. So next Sunday, this time, you know, we'll do, we'll take the Lord's Supper, just yeah. the way they did. Mm -hmm. Just the way they did and <clears throat> before Jesus uh, was crucified. Amen. Same way. <clears throat> With unleavened bread and, and kosher wine. Amen. That's what he had. Unleavened bread and kosher wine. Yes, yes. It wasn't grape juice. Because the grape juice, grape juice still had yeast in it. Mm -hmm. They took it out too, too soon. Mm -hmm. They didn't let the grape juice ferment and become wine. Mm -hmm. So that's what we'll do next week. But, yeah. um, <clears throat> you know, we need to come to church. Yes. If you don't come to church, you miss out. That's right, man. You miss out when you come to church. When you don't. Or when you don't come to church, you miss out. <laughs> Amen. And even if you do come to church, you still miss out. Mm -hmm. Some. Mm -hmm. Because they're not all here. Their body's here. That's right. right. Yeah. You're present, but nobody's home. Your mind is, is somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Your mind is at Denny's or wherever else. Uh, Dairy Queen, Burger King, wherever. So your body's there, but your mind is somewhere else. Yeah. See, so you can lose out even if you're here. Uh, that people lose out even when they're in church, sitting in the pew. Uh, we, need a, we, need, we can't lose out that way. You can't be so close and yet so far. Because when that day comes, when you're when the Lord says and you're there on judgment day and 
Because if you don't make the rapture, if you don't make the rapture, you're going to be there on judgment day in that line, waiting in line. And ain't no, no rush in that line. Amen. There's not going to be a rush in that line. Amen. You ain't going to be, hey, hurry up. Hey. You crowded here, you crowded there. You ain't going to. No, when you're in that line, you ain't, it ain't going to matter. Matter of fact, you're going to want everybody to crowd you. That's right. When you're in that line on Judgment Day, you're going to want people to crowd you. That's right. No, you go first. You go first. Yeah. You ain't even going to want that line to end. But if you're in that line, and you're a child of God now, in that line, it means you probably didn't make it. Amen. You did not make it if you're in that line. That's right, man. Okay? And remember, there's going to be people in line, child of God, ch children of God that are going to be in the line, but they didn't. They weren't in that line as in the church age. Because in the church age, you have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, that's the power of the resurrection. And if you miss the resurrection with the Holy Ghost, you're in that line and you're going to lose out. You're going to be kicked to the left, to outer darkness. Where there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. So you don't want to be in that line. You want to make it. You want to make the rapture. So... <clears throat> So you don't want to miss out. You don't want to miss out. And like I was saying, you know, when you miss church, you miss out. You miss out because the Lord wanted to bless you that day. You miss out and the Lord wanted to bless you. He wanted to heal you and you missed out because you didn't go to church. Amen. Amen. So I have here just to stay with the notes. The woman with the issue of blood said within herself, if, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Amen. So we need to think and say the same. If I can just make it to church and get anointed with oil and pray for, I will be made whole. Yes, amen. King David, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, right. let us go into the house of the Lord. Right, yeah. He was glad and he didn't even have the Holy Ghost. That's right. He didn't have what you and I have. That's right, you and I have the Holy Ghost and you. You don't, you're not even like that. You're the ones that are saying how boring it is. How boring it is to go to church. Um, it's a drag. Going to church is a drag. Oh. Amen. <clears throat> Kids, young people, any people coming to church shouldn't be a drag. It shouldn't be boring or any such thing. That's right, man. You shouldn't feel that way. Coming to church... It should be the best thing that ever happened to you. That's right, man. You don't have to, you don't have to live that life of sin, that excess baggage, like they say, that everybody comes with. You don't have that excess baggage. You don't have the scars that are in the world, that memory that haunts you. You don't have that. The Bible says how blessed. You're blessed. You're more blessed. Because you never were there. You were never there. You're more blessed. You're more blessed. Yeah. You know, it's so, church is so boring to some that you don't fall asleep. Mom, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Because... <coughs> They even went to sleep when the Apostle Paul was preaching. Fell off the, who knows how high the, how high and they were upstairs and they fell. But they're lucky the Apostle Paul was there to resurrect him. Yes, man. 
The Lord may or may not resurrect you. So, so when you don't come to church, you miss out on whatever blessing the Lord had for you. That's right. I remember <coughs> missing out on a friend's baptism yeah. for not being in church. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I, the day that I missed church, a friend of ours got baptized. Yeah. Little Wayne. Yes. Wayne. I forgot his last name. He said he, he got baptized in Jesus' name. Yeah. I don't think I ever saw him before that. Before that, who knows when I saw him. But after that, I never saw him again to this day. <coughs> to this day. I can see. He got baptized in. I don't know when, but he, I think he did time in prison. And, um, I never saw him again to this day. So when you miss church, you miss out. That's right. You miss out and you tell people about the Lord, come to church, come to church, and the day they come, you don't come. That's right. That's true. What, what, what example is that? What testimony is that? Church is good for them, but not for you. <clears throat> and that's what that says. I got someone. Someone calls me regularly. Tells me all this stuff. <clears throat> I'm like, okay, you're telling me all this stuff. When when's the last time you went to church? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I haven't been to church in a long time. Well, you need to come to church. You need to come to church. You tell all these people about the Lord. Mm -hmm. We had a baptism, what, two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Because he brought, he sent someone over. Yeah. <coughs> he sent someone over. And we baptized them. Mm -hmm. But, same thing, like I said. Church is good for... For you, but not for me. You know, there's a, it's a, I already told him what his problem was. And, and that's the reason why they don't come. It's the divorce and remarriage. Divorce and remarriage, and I told him the right thing. But <clears throat> they don't want the right thing. They want to be able to divorce and get remarried. You can. If you were married in the church, if you were married in the church, that's it. That's the, the marriage the Lord recognizes. Before that, if you were married before, a hundred times, the Lord forgave those. But when you gave your life to the Lord, that's it. That's the one he recognizes. That's the one. That's right, man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it says, Before they were unclean, your children were unclean. But now they are sanctified. That unbelieving spouse, since you came to the Lord, that unbelieving spouse is now recognized. It's now sanctified. So is your children, it says. Before they were unclean, they were illegitimate, but now there's a protection over them. But the Lord recognize it now. Now. See, this, this person, he, he wants to get married. He wants to get married. He wants to have a relationship with someone and start over. He said, no, you gotta, you gotta go back to that wife. As long as, as long as they're alive, you're still bound. You're still bound to that wife. Okay? And until they pass away, then you're free. You're free to remarry only in the Lord, the Bible says. 
Right. And that's the problem. And he won't, he'd like to find someone that'll tell him otherwise. He wants to find someone that'll tell him it's okay. It's okay to remarry. It's okay to do this and that. And uh, that's why he fights it. That's why he fights not coming. But you got one sooner or later. You have to make up your mind that I'm gonna go to church no matter what. I'm gonna go to church no matter what. I'm gonna. It, it doesn't matter. Because church, serving the Lord is the most important thing. Because okay? in church you're gonna be, you're gonna hear what you need to hear. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how are you gonna hear? How are you gonna hear if, if they weren't sent of God? Hmm? How are you going to hear if you if they weren't sent of God? Hmm? I was sent of God. I was sent of God. Go. <clears throat> Go. Go and start that word. Straight street. How are you going to hear? How are you going to hear unless they're sent of God? Hmm? So... Don't miss out. <clears throat> Don't miss out on coming. Don't miss out on the coming of the Lord. Because of the habit of not coming to church. You know what I was going to read? It says, remember the song, you came to church one day too late. The church was caught up in the air or raptured the day before. But he wanted to come to church and he came one day too late. Don't, don't come too late. You know, a lot of times we, we, we're running late. We, we, we come too late for whatever it may be. Not just church, not just other things. Other things we come too late. You missed the sale. You missed the sale, you missed this or that. You came too late. You don't want to come too late. See, what was that? It was a scripture. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to read in uh, Romans. Let's see if I can find it. I'll find it this way. I'm going to, go to, I'm going to, go to Hebrews chapter 10, 25. Okay, to Romans 13, 11. So I'm going to read Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. See? We're much closer now. We're much closer now than when we first believed. Like I said, we're, we're living in the last days. You don't think so. We are. Yes, we are. Yeah. You don't think we're living in the last days. You might not know what's going on out there. You might not know um, <coughs> the, um, how many of you know that that before you get unemployment now. I don't know what it was before, but now before you can even get unemployment, you have to get 
facial recognition. You have to, you do a, you send a picture of your, take a picture of your ID, and then you have to do a selfie. You do a selfie and then, and then on the camera you do a, they do a facial recognition. Okay. And that's going to be the norm. Okay. That's going to be the norm where, where anybody that wants to get it, get unemployment has to do. They have to get a digital ID. And that's just now. Who knows what, what the future holds? Who knows what the future is going to hold where now it's, it's that. Uh, I'll scan your face, make sure it's you. Um, and then later on, later on it might, might change to something else. The Bible does talk about the mark of the beast. Yes. That is going to be on your right hand or your forehead. Is that going to be some form of digital ID? Mm -hmm. hmm? well, they, can, they started on it now. Not, and not a digital ID on your forehead or hand, but it's facial recognition. Hmm. What, do, what do they call AI? Oh, oh, yeah. They call AI AI, right? <laughs> but what is AI? It's artificial intelligence. It's artificial intelligence. Hmm. It, it's, the, it's the future. It's the future. It's coming. So we're getting closer and closer. Like I said, We've got tracks where the mark of the beast, people used to think was a barcode. Uh, a barcode. You know the barcode that's on it. Barcode. And then they have people with tattoos of a barcode on their, they have them on their neck, but they have them on their forehead. No, it's, it's gonna be even more technical than that. It's going to be even more technical than that. Technology now is, it's into the nano bits, nano, where it's small. It's small enough to, to get into your right hand. It's small enough to get into your forehead and you know without nobody seeing it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be all ugly with the barcode on your head, forehead. Or, no, it's hidden. It'll be hidden. It'll be something, something hidden. And it, it's coming. It's coming. So now is not the time to miss church. That's right, amen. Now is the time to be in church. Yes, amen. Because we're. You see the day approaching, <coughs> it's time to run and get to church. Yes, amen. When the demoniac of the Gadarenes saw Jesus, he ran to him. Yes, he did. He ran to Jesus. Yes. It's time to run. It's time to run to Jesus. It's not a time to hide. That's right. It's not a time to break times over. Great time for serving the Lord is over. And I know some people of God they probably thank the Lord for COVID. Not not that not the don't get me wrong, not the deaths and everything, but just that they everything was closed. Everything was closed. Church was closed for some and they got to stay home. They got to stay home. They got to see see church on video, on YouTube, Facebook. It, it, it's time to give back to church. Like before, like it should never close down. 
church should never close down. That's right, amen. You know, the Lord, the Lord will protect his people. Yes, he and, and if, if it's time to go, let me tell you that when it's time to go, no prayer is going to keep you. That's right. When it's time to go, it's time to go. That's right. And it's better for, it's better for you and I will when that time comes. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said, it's, it's better for me if I go, but for your sake, it's best that I stay. That's right. Yeah. It's best for you that, that my time's not up yet yeah. because he still had to be around. Yes. The Apostle Paul still had to be around to, to preach, to do what he was doing. I know for the Apostle Paul it would have been better to, to die and be with the Lord. But. Amen. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to just invite you to come to the altar. And if you need to pray, pray. If you need to make things right with the Lord, make things right with the Lord. Amen. I just wanted to, to preach. I'm coming to church. Yes, I am. Thank you, Lord. Preach, I'm coming to church. I know. You know once a week church. That we're coming to church once a week. In the last days, <clears throat> we need more church. Yeah. We need more of God. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it? Thank you, Lord. So come. Come to the altar. Amen. Yes,